信じられないなら一つお見せしましょう泣け紅姫 What's up? It's Skulls, and today I want to be going over my farming team. See so here, I'm running Kisuke, Yoruichi, and Kakaporo. It's definitely a unique lineup、uh, using characters that you've probably never even seen before, with them being metal exchange and not very popular amongst players. So, getting straight into it, let's take a look at my Kakaporo. Uh, I have him 5 out of 5. Same with Yodoichi. You might think I'm crazy, but I just had the medals to do so. And then here, he's a coin drop character, not a crystal drop character. But that's because I have him linked up with crystal characters. I'm not someone that likes to have duplicate characters in my box because it definitely wastes that inventory space. So between Kukaporo and Yoruichi, there's enough crystal characters to fill up these three slots. I mean, I might have one or two extra, but recently there was the Xyloporo. He's a coin drop. So he's like a little extra that's in my box that I don't really need. I don't really care about because I'm pretty satisfied with my current team that I have. So yeah, a crystal jewel drop, and then all three coin watches. And I have pretty much the same lineup with Yodoichi. Her being a coin character with crystal drop links and with the coin watches. So it makes it pretty much ideal as like the secondary characters to be making sure I'm getting the most crystals and coins as I can per run. Especially when I'm farming point events. You can definitely get a lot from that. And then for the main course, my Kisuke, I have him link slotted. I have him、um, max transcended with attack.、Uh, he's a normal attack character, so he's gonna be autoing at like butter very smoothly. And then for his accessories and links, I have him gold chappy, regular chappy, and I got him the movement speed accessory. I prefer this movement speed accessory over something like、uh, the wooden sword that gives normal attack damage or even the hollow bait because he's already doing a lot of damage. Especially with low 10 transcendence, he is pretty much one shotting everything. So, just having that movement speed definitely gives him the faster clear time. And then for the links, it's a hybrid of normal attack and damage taken. So, he's literally not gonna die. He's gonna be doing a lot of damage, and he's got the movement speed. He's gonna be clearing faster because no matter how much damage he's dealing, if he's one shotting them, the only thing that's limiting him is getting to the next set of enemies. So, yeah, he's Link Slot level 15, so he has the bonus ability, which I gave him increased crystal and jewel drop. Once again, reinforcing my statement about how he's already doing a lot of damage, he does not need any bonus ability that's giving him more damage. Alright, that was the quick rundown between these three characters and my builds. So, let's take a look at in game and see how they perform. As you can see, there is a limiting factor with the hidden enemies. But, you know, that's something that's not gonna make him struggle too much. I could always swap out one of the chappies for the, the pill item that hits hidden enemies. Because, once again, even then, he's gonna be one shotting all the enemies. Yeah, this probably wasn't a good demonstration on this.、Uh, probably the point event probably showed it much better. But, for here, it doesn't really matter. But anyone can clear this, so it's more about the drops. Like, how many crystals am I getting from doing the k i s u k e training zone? So, let's, let's see right here how many drops. I did times five, so we get like the average between all five runs. So, yeah, without the hit, hidden enemies, he had a clear time of 55 seconds. Could definitely have been dropped dramatically because he did struggle quite a bit. So, as we can see here, he had about an average of 150 small, 35 medium, and about 7 large per ticket. So let's multiply that by 5. I'll probably have the math shown on screen here. It, it's definitely above average. 
but I'm sure you do want to know how he performs on point events. Because, you know, point events is what you should be farming when you really have nothing else to be farming. Or if, like, you don't want your tickets building up and you don't really feel like playing, just having it on auto while you're doing point event is definitely ideal. Okay, there is the hidden enemies here, so I will swap it out. Oh, luckily I have attack 30. Okay, that's good, that's good. Okay, sorry, Ichigo, I'm gonna swap it out. I'll, I'll just compare the two. I'll do one run with the pill, and then one run without the pill, and then do like a time comparison. Alright, so a run with the pill took 1 minute and 22 seconds, 118,000 coins, and okay, well, apparently you do get crystals here, I thought it would just be only point event lottery. So even here, it's not too bad, if you're farming this bunch of tickets and whatnot, you're definitely gonna start stacking a lot of crystals over time. Alright, so now let's try a run without the Hit Hidden Enemies accessory, see how that compares to the 122 with the pill equipped. Alright, so with the Hidden Enemies pill accessory, it was 122, and then without it, it's 129. I do feel like this was a terrible showcase of that comparison, because I noticed the, the little ninja enemies, they were not hidden. They were just standing there, I guess they're like the ones that just hit you with poison. Just for reference, this is my crystals that I have accumulated over a few years. Uh, don't be surprised about the large XP crystals. That was from the 6th anniversary event. It sucks that it hasn't came back around again because this was definitely a lifesaver. And I definitely will need more if I'm going to be doing a huge ticket opening. So yeah, that was my showcase on my personal overpowered farming team. If you don't really care about playing as fast as like Kisuke would, uh, another good alternative is probably Akon. He is a metal exchange character. He's ranged. I used to use him back in the day. Very nostalgic thinking about it. So yeah, I hope this video enlightened you to know kind of what's the more optimal way to farm for crystals and coins. Uh, single player wise, I'm pretty sure you can, you know how to translate this to multiplayer. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, have you guys been rocking this kind of build? Have you guys not really thought about it? Because it does help a lot. In the long run, you're definitely going to be getting more drops than the average player.